What is the best tech stack you can use to make money? This video is going to be one of the most, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Why didn't I think of that type of video? My goal of this video is to give you perspective from a real software engineer, why you would choose a specific tech stack, how to approach choosing your tech stack, and why it actually fundamentally matters what you're building and why that is specifically correlated to the tech stack. I'm saying tech stack a lot. So tech stack, tech stack, tech stack, tech stack. TLDR of what a tech stack is. That is going to be the underlying building blocks that we use. They're all together. It's absolutely amazing. This is going to be your front end. This is going to be your back end. They're all together. Yay. And they turn into your app. So what are examples of this, Corbin? Just spit them off. Front end React, back end GCP with Firebase, back end Superbase, back end AWS. Give me another front end, Corbin. Next.js. So this is the different code languages we use. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So what is the best tech stack? For me to best answer this question, you don't have to go down any more Reddit rabbit holes. No more watching YouTube videos. This is how. What is your idea? Corbin, my idea is X. Okay, nice idea. Go to a chat. Once you go to a chat, what is a competitor of your idea? So for example, let's say I want to make a stock brokerage platform. I want to build a platform like Robinhood. What is their tech stack? There is something very common you do in marketing that incurs where sometimes you follow behind what big companies do because they spend so much money in marketing budget that why would you take the sunken cost of putting 100 grand, 50 grand into ads when XYZ company already did a marketing campaign so you can reference their data and be like, oh, that actually seemed to perform really well with this demographic. What I'm saying here is that a multi-billion dollar company like Robinhood, what would they use as their tech stack and why? So you'll get your initial answer here, but let's laser in a little bit. What is the web app front end and back end? As what you need to understand is that if I build an iOS app that provides the same value, typically they may have a shared back end, obviously, so the user can log in on their iPhone and also log in on their website. But when approaching software development, what I usually like to do is approach the web app before the iOS app or the Android app. Why do you do that, Corbin? There's a bunch of reasons why. One of the most fundamental reason number one is that creating your initial product, you're accessible to everyone. All they need to do is have an internet connection, a website link. Proceed. So scrolling down here, if I want to laser in a little bit, right, because the way they approach the iOS app is going to be different than they, how they approach their web app. What we'll notice is their text stack shows up here. React, TypeScript, Redux. So your next question might be is, did we just copy it, Corbin? In short, maybe, but it depends on what you're building. But for example, let me look at this. From my experience, what I've learned in the last 10 years of developing, what would I do? I know React. I know TypeScript. I know Redux. So I'm already comfortable. I like it. I go to their back end, go to their infrastructure, AWS. I don't really develop much in AWS. I'm much more of a GCP guy, Google Cloud. Therefore, for me, I would just substitute AWS with GCP. Wait, are you doing that, Corbin? Because I'm doing it because I'm more comfortable with GCP. That's the reason. People are going to try to sway you here and there, give you pointers of like, you know, AWS is way better than GCP. What are you doing using GCP? No, no, no. Go if you're comfortable with. If you're coming from the direction or the approach of Corbin, I'm not comfortable with any of it, then it's simple. Choose the one that there's the best education around. And I'm not saying I'm the best educator on these topics, but if you're going to follow and watch my content, then you are going to become an absolute assassin when it comes to GCP, Firebase, React, TypeScript, you're going to be an absolute assassin. But if you're coming from a perspective of like, Corbin, I really like Superbase though. Can you do Superbase? I mean, yeah, I could do a couple videos on it, but I'm not an assassin. Like I'm, I'm like infantry at that point. I don't want to do infantry. Okay. Make me an assassin. That is how you want to approach a text. Like whatever you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with anything, then the next best way to approach it is who gives the best education on what you're specifically trying to learn. I mean, that just makes sense, right? If you're trying to expedite your learning as fast as possible, then lean towards a tech stack that seems to be the most bolstered. It's not even me. Like other people, People in the community, as you already see, are using React frontends. Why is React frontends so popular? Because a lot of people that build tutorials around React frontends, it just becomes, it's easier. Like the whole library is easier. So when creating your tech stack and you know, what makes the most money, there is a little nuance to this advice. And this is where you got to take the layer one step deeper. So what I mean by this is let's make a new chat. And what I'm about to show you is a very specific example when it comes to the video game industry. So it's like, I want to make a game like Call of Duty. I mean, that'd be a massive project, but let's just say you do. I want to make Call of Duty video game. What is their tech stack? You hit enter here, but first off, go in ask mode so it doesn't go crazy on me. Go and ask, hit enter here. There is one thing you need to learn about developers. So what you'll notice here is that we have Unity, C Sharp, Unreal Engine, you know, all these different little languages to create it. You might see this and be like, well, Call of Duty's massive. So obviously I got to go with whatever languages they use. But there's actually lore behind why they use a library like C++ or C Sharp. The reason a big, massive video game like Call of Duty or look up most of the video games in the industry use these languages 
is because a lot of how the console system or alternatively the hardware on a laptop, they're ported and have built out infrastructure for these kind of languages. What I'm trying to say here is that if I were to recreate Call of Duty, I wouldn't build it on these languages. I'll build it with Rust. Rust is a more recent version of this kind of language that is more optimized and is better for development. And the only reason a lot of these companies haven't transitioned to the Rust library is because it's a little bit more new. Because it's more new, you have a bunch of experienced developers that have been developing for 10, 20 years. Hey, try something new. You think they're going to want to try something new after 20 years of developing video games on that language? Probably not. <laughs> so you then need to have the discretion to understand, oh, that wouldn't be smart. I need to build this on Rust rather than the older languages. You might not have that extra piece of nuance that I have from my experience of knowing why this even occurred. And open up an AI model chat. It's actually pretty interesting, this whole situation. But what I want you to do is if you don't have that extra piece of knowledge of understanding, hey, I want to build a Robin Hood, and then it shows this tech stack, and you're like, well, if Robin Hood's doing it, I must do it. Then what I would do, honestly, which might be a lot simpler than you would think, is I would simply go to that chat, this chat here. What's kind of funny is you could probably do something along the lines of like, hey, you know in the video game industry how Rust is a new framework and it's really optimized for video games and a lot of people aren't using it yet. Like that situation. Is there any type of similar situation here when looking at Robin Hood's tech stack where in theory we could use a better tech stack in this context? The answer could be yes or the answer could be like, no, this is this is it. This is probably the best tech stack up to this point. So that's it, y'all. I'm not going to bore you or try to convince you to use React. What I'm telling you is you can follow in the footsteps of giants, but sometimes those giants aren't right. And what you got to understand is sometimes those giants, it's harder for them to move because they've been so ingrained. Like we see with the video game industry, they're so ingrained in operationally how to approach creating a video game for the last 20 to 30 years that transitioning into something like that is higher cost than simply just putting out the next Call of Duty for the next year. Get your Call of Duty. We don't want to port it. Get your Call of Duty. As you're doing all these style videos, make sure you the like is completely free. I'll see you in the next. Did I just teach you something about the video game industry and that you're going to be able to apply to basically any type of application that you ever want to create in your entire life? And you're going to be like, this is kind of an interesting fact that I didn't realize I could actually apply that video game fact about Rust and all this different porting to a separate, entirely different industry type of video. I'm like infantry at that point. I don't want to do infantry, okay? Make me an assassin.